Well, today we have a very special guest in the Chess Base India studio. We have Nubair Shah Sheikh, who is one of the strongest IMs of Mumbai. Nubair, welcome to Chess Base India. Yeah, uh, thank you, Sagar Bhaiya. I'm feeling very nice to be in the Chess Base India office. So, Nubair thought that it would be a very good idea to do a video on one of your favorite openings. Yeah. N- not the entire opening, but one of the systems. Can you tell us a bit about it? Okay, let's go for the Karo Khan and maybe we can have a look at advance and uh, see if it is an interesting one. Okay, so so Karo Khan, I have to tell the viewers that uh, is Nubair's favorite opening. Uh, sh- should we flip the board? Yeah, should sure. we take black on our and side? Maybe took our game first. Or... Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we have uh, d4, d5, and Nubair, you have been playing Karo Khan for. Maybe you have made a living out of it, yeah? So, uh, <laughs> so how did you decide uh, to play Karo Khan and what was your motivation? Recently, I am playing a lot of openings. Okay, Karo Khan I am playing from very early childhood. So, uh, I still like to play it and I am having no problems in it. So, I still continue playing it against a very good grandmasters. And how did you learn it? Uh, okay, Karo Khan was taught to me by uh, IM Sharat Tilak sir. And uh, we, start, we started with the basic concept of the line and sooner or later like I played more games, I understood the more concepts about it and after analyzing it, like I'm knowing uh, most of it. Okay, so we'll go to the advanced variation which is I think one of the most popular. If you play Karo Khan, yeah. I think 50% of your games you will face advanced these exactly. days. Exactly, yes, exactly. Uh, advanced is very popular because uh, in this uh, main line is bishop f5 and uh, it is a very rich line and after this like there are many complications i mean white can just play nf3 bishop e2 or go with the lines of h4 uh, or some lines with g4 as well and you need to be very well prepared and in this like there are many factors for black as well so it's like a full uh, theoretical plus uh, complicated battle that's why players are preferring it and most and we see most of the gms are opting this Right, but uh, you decided to surprise your opponent. I don't know if it was a surprise for him or not, but you played the move c5. Yeah, actually I play both uh, bishop f5 and c5. Just sometimes I go for bishop f5 and sometimes c5. I would recommend uh, with this DVD for bishop f5 variation. He has covered uh, most of the things. Okay, you, uh, with its DVD uh, uh, which he has made on the Karo Khan ex- for chess base, ex- have, have you seen it? Yeah, I have seen it, yes. I have and, seen it. and did you like it? Yeah, I, I got some new ideas and uh, most of the variations were matching, but uh, I got some new novelties as well. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we'll put the with its uh, DVD link in the description if anyone wants to have a look at it. Yeah, sure. Uh, and so, but with it recommends Bishop F5. Yes. Yeah. And Actually, Bishop F5 is recommended, but C5 is uh, always interesting, and it, as it always comes with, I mean, uh, many tactical opportunities for both the players. And if White doesn't know how to react properly, you are having good chances. Right. So uh, essentially, if you if you look at it, if White plays the move C3. Then you will put, suppose, bishop f5, yeah. and then you will get like a French defense but with an active bishop. Exactly, yes, that's the point. So, in the game, uh, the first one which we will see is with Adam Tukhaya. We played knight f3. Yes, here, like, actually, white have two main options. Uh, one is the d into c5, and another is nf3. Let's uh, first look at uh, nf3. Okay. Uh, nf3 is a very solid approach, and many grandmasters have played this. Even once I played with Duda, Duda Jain. And he has opted for the same. That was but long back in 2012 World Youth or something. So, so, so you played with Duda and uh, yeah, like we are same age group, and like that was a very important round for me as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he, you took? Yeah, I took C D4, Knight D4, E6. Uh, here there are two moves: uh, C4 and Knight D2. Usually players are playing C4 and then Knight C6, Knight C3. Oops, sorry. Okay, Knight C6. Knight c3 and now bishop c5. This uh, we had a similar game with Webo Suri in the Delhi Open as well, and which was a very again a complete surprise game for both of us as we both had novelties under our sleeves. Okay, <laughs> so in the game, uh, Tukhaya, who is a very strong uh, yeah. Ukrainian GM, he played knight d2, and this was played in uh, New Delhi. This game as well. So, uh, this is where you made your first GM now. Yes, exactly. Uh, I was a little surprised with knight d2 first of all, but later I understood it's a typical uh, Soviet approach. He is just putting his knight on f3, bishop on d3 and I am going to have tough time if he is just going to develop his pieces. Sure. So, white is saying, okay, I am going to develop my pieces, where is your play? Yes. So, I started with normal knight c6, knight f3, bishop c5 and here he played c3. 
to be honest i actually i wanted to play f6 instead of bishop c5 but uh, as i was not prepared and i thought it's a little premature as moves like bishop b5 can come and let's say bishop d7 and queen e2 i mean white just looks perfect here i mean everything is under control right so i felt like this is a little premature and won't be a good thing to do so i tried to develop bishop uh, first i was expecting something like knight c6 followed by bishop d3 take take and bishop d3 or something uh, but then he played c3 and i was happy that now i can get f6 I just uh, took some time on the clock and calculated some few variations and go. I went for f6. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because imagine that <clears throat> if you play something like passively, yes. then I think uh, white already starts to get a good initiative on the king side. Exactly, and white's attack may get stronger because the bishop is still in, and it's uh, like French bishop. So, and the advantage of uh, Karo can c5 is uh, you should go for f6 break uh, earlier and uh, out and get some. Uh, initiative of play in the center. So uh, idea is to basically eliminate remove the, the remove yeah. the e5 pawn. Yeah, eliminate yes, eliminate it. the e5 pawn. So you played f6, yeah. and after b4, b4, bishop b6, b5. To be honest, I didn't like his approach of uh, going b4, b5 so early. Maybe he could have just taken and played bishop d3 or something. Hmm. After this, I, I had this ne5. And if I, which actually looks very nice yeah, this uh, from White's point of view, when you look at initially like getting Queen H5 check, then you can play Queen E5, Bishop A3, I cannot castle, and everything is stuck. But uh, he didn't uh, see it little deeper after we checking. You, you didn't think of doing Queen F6 here, or this is not so good. Uh, I just didn't wanted to play this because I thought I can play an F6, and I had like I wanted to get E5 break with queens on the board. Okay. So, so because you, once the bishop knight uh, uh, knight gets re uh, removed from the d4 square, the f2 point is very weak, and there I can uh, have some tricks. So you are you are playing already very aggressively. You want to win the game. Yeah, now I want to win the game. <laughs> okay. So bishop a3, a3 uh, cutting off your king yeah, from castling. Yeah, expected, uh, but I had king f7. Ah, and you are going to do like rook, perhaps rook e8 and king g8. Exactly. Some, some exactly. Yeah. Ah, okay. F3. Yeah, this move is important yeah, in the from the point of like many times. For example, he removes his knight, bishop f2, ng4, and sometimes ng4 was coming. So he thought like it's essential. Okay. Just for our viewers, uh, yeah. like if knight b3, then you already have the strike. Bishop f2, yes, yes. And you lose the queen. Yeah. So in the game, he played f3 and rook, rook e8. e8. Bishop e2, bishop c7. Queen e3 and now e5. And now you're taking over. Yeah, I'm taking over. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm just ready to. This bishop must be feeling really good now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to come out. Yeah. This never happens in French. So, uh, if you are a French player and it's your like long time dream that bishop should come out, you should start playing Karokan with c5. <laughs> <laughs> so, every, every every French player who has suffered with this bishop should think about the Karokan opening. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Karokan. I love it. So, nothing to argue there. Yeah. Knight b3. And here I think you, you already started uh, yeah. taking over the initiative. Yeah, because it's just matter of one with white castles, I mean the position is equal and maybe white can be better because of my weakened little bit weak king. Correct. So I went all the way d4. Takes, takes. takes. And, and this was a pawn sacrifice. Yeah, it was a pawn sacrifice. Uh, initially I thought he will not take it because I'm having a lot of moves here. Uh, maybe he can, he can also play queen d2 instead of uh, ed, cd4. Back. Ah, instead of, of cd4. Yeah, queen yeah, d2. Queen d2. Uh, here I was planning to play knight d5. The idea is queen h4 and of course the c3 pawn and sometimes any 3 as well. So if I take, you will give a check? Uh, not now, but I will just take it first. And now the bishop is also open. So I mean with both the bishops and knight and queen, I mean it can be a dangerous attack. Sure, knight is coming in and, and here he can... If he takes, then I think he's already going to face big attack. Yeah, I think just knight f4 is enough for getting a piece, I guess. Yeah, knight f4 is simply winning. Yeah. Even bishop e5 looks strong. Yeah, bishop so, e5 looks strong, exactly. So this, uh, uh, he played cd. I think he played the most naturally. He, he took a pawn. Yeah. Here also, I was, again, I was thinking of knight d5. But then the move which I played in the game, I like the more bishop d7. Because it comes with two new threats. That is bishop b5. And the bishop e5. So, and actually, to be honest, he's having no defense here to defend both. Because for example, castles, e2 is hanging. Correct. So, he, he decided to play king f2. Mm. 
and, sac- and once again decide to sacrifice the rook for the bishop, like typical again uh, Russian approach. <laughs> I was not happy after seeing king f2 on the board. But then I thought, okay, material is a material. So I went for it, bishop e5 and bishop a1. And now just all of the pieces, rook c8, rook c1. Now the threat was to play queen b6 and to take the b5 pawn. Uh, so now if you play directly queen b6, it's not possible because the bishop comes to c5 or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's important to take with the rook and forcing him to take back with the either of these pieces. And then I, I mean, take, forcing him to take with the bishop and making it inactive. Correct. For the, so that you can play queen. You can't take with the queen. Queen or knight because of queen b6 check and bishop b5. I mean bishop b4. First maybe bishop b5. Uh, yeah? No, but then you have queen c5. Queen c5 is coming in. Yeah, if you take some, this, then yeah. you already have some problems. With, with the queen c5. But uh, if you play queen d6 straight away, then maybe he has bishop, bishop c5. c5 here. Yeah. So I need to play. I had something for this as well. Were uh, you thinking of rook e2 followed by bishop b5, but it doesn't. Yeah, work. I can just play king f2 or something. Yeah. Or maybe just. Maybe just king moves and then improve. Just improve. If your not, position. I'm getting a pawn, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the game, after played, rook c1, he took with the bishop. The bishop, yes. So that he can play queen b6, knight d4, trying to stabilize. And it looks like knight is kind of out. Uh, it is a kind of outpost because no one can remove the knight from d4. Right. But it's a pin. So, so I just decided to improve the pieces and uh, I put some pressure. Queen c5, bishop e6, trying to improve the bishop as well. And then the bishop c4, exchanging the double bishops. Hey, you're playing very methodically and, yeah, and I think... He's already feeling uncomfortable yeah. now. And by the time, now I can just play king g8. I mean, I, uh, I could have played knight d5, but then he's having some tricks with queen h6 and queen g5. So it's always like, be careful when the king is on f7. So I just removed the king. Hmm. And now I'm playing threatening nd5 or nh5, but he just blundered and played queen g5. For which he just missed queen b4, which is a mate on e1. Queen e1 is coming up. Oh, and also nice. losing b2 bishop. So there's a mate here and you lose the bishop. So he resigned the game here. Yes. Wow. So he, his rating was, I think, 2570. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you. I was some 2400. But I think you dominated the game completely. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. So we come back to this position. And in the previous game that we just saw right now, Knight f3 was played by Tukayev. But now we move to d into c5. d into c5. Yes. It, it's a very common move nowadays. We can see all players are opting for this. Uh, here, like black, have many approaches. Like, for example, e6 or knight c6. Let's talk about e6. I, f- I feel that is better because bishop immediately comes to the c5. But you're closing your bishop, yeah? But Yeah, but later it's going to come in the game after f6 break. Correct. So it's like what he did with Tukayev. Uh, he closed his bishop now, but with f6, he will then make his pawns mobile and play e5. Yeah. Uh, this is the game against uh, Fabian Libizewski. Uh, it's from... Uh, Spain, yeah, yeah, Rocket, th- yeah. It was uh, Rocketers uh, Dima Open, and it was from uh, Jan 2015, I guess. That time okay. I was around 2200 or something. Right. So a3 and c6 uh, and f3 bishop c5. In this version, I have lost few games as well. So after uh, learning from them, I understood that f6 should be played earlier. But the, as this game is from 2015, uh, I decided to play. I, I, that time I was not doing f6 is um, important here. Here actually f6 is uh, more, more stronger after bishop d3. Yeah, f6 yeah. is better. Nowadays also this uh, uh, top players are playing, I mean, uh, Sopnil Beja, Vidit also, play, uh, Vidit, uh, also plays this Karo Khan. And now, recently we have seen uh, uh, Karak in uh, Adiban in world teams last round. Right. Adiban also opted for the c5 variation. So it's getting popular. Even game. Anand played it once. Yeah. Against uh, Maxim Vashir Lagrav and he won that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we can't say Karo Khan is like an Indian opening, but a lot of Indians are playing it. Yes, after Karpo, like Indian, Indians are completely dominating it. <laughs> okay, so BD3, but here you went Knight G7. Knight G7, Bishop uh, Castles, Castles. Knight G6, Six, Bishop, Bishop B2, B2 and Castles. castles. Now Knight G2. Here there are two moves. For example, Rook E1. The idea of Rook E1 is uh, uh, for Knight F4, they can go Bishop F1. Those For those who are Bishop lovers. They can they play like this mm-hmm. and some plays with knight d2 and c4. So, but now that f6 is a little difficult because you know you have this bishop breathing down this diagonal. How should black play here because it's already uh, not so easy? Well, it's, or you should play f6 still. You should still play f6, but I would recommend to go back to the move number 
7 or 8 I guess and play f6 uh, when the white, white, white played bishop d3. Ah, here only you yeah. should play f6. f6 okay. Yeah. This is recommended now. This game is older. Uh, I played, I found it f6 over the board and then realized that it should be played as quick as possible. Okay. So knight f4 and here mm. he gave up his bishop. I think it's also logical because the entire battle could run around the dark square. So he says that, okay, you take my bishop, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, those days, uh, Fabian Lebeshevsky, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But uh, he, that day, those days he was in very good form and that year he finished, uh, he had podium finish in Reykjavik Open, which is a very tough tournament. Yes, moment. yes. So, I was first surprised by his play, but then I understood if I take on d3, he can, I mean, my bishop will never come in the game. He can just take with the pawn also and play d4 and just... Yeah. Uh, if he gets my, this and knight c5, you will I be mean, in trouble. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm not doing anything in the game, it's like that. So, I decided to complicate matters and go, I went a5, uh, b5 a4, bc6, I thought after ab3 I'm doing well because either I have to take cb7 or something like cb3 after which I'm having... Uh, you take this and even though you are a pawn I'm down, having a uh, threat nd3, queen d3, bishop a6. Ah, this is good. So on this I was, I, I played all this, on this tactic. But later he just played a positional move c7 which I completely missed. Mm -hmm. And then I realized again my bishop problem is not going to solve. <laughs> so this guy is still in the yeah. inside. But okay, you take, take, uh, and I was thinking, just I don't know if I'm right, but if you take here, take here, and just play b6, then uh, it's possible to play bishop b6, but now the b6 is a new weakness. And, and also can, b4, yeah, yeah because bishop a6, b5. b5, and again, it's this I'm bishop. Cramped. Yeah. Is not so good. And, and you like, can even play rookie one, knight d4, or bishop d4. And yeah, just, this one, and I think white is in. Control. Yeah, it's plus equal at least. So, you played bd7, which is very solid move. Yeah, I decided to develop the bishop and later I wanted to do some f6 bishop p8 if, if possible. So, he, he defended it. Bishop c2. And now I went f6. f6, ef, gf. GF. And so, this is something which I think uh, players watching this should learn. Many times they are afraid of pushing the pawn in front of their king and then their king gets a little exposed. But here I think you, what you want to do is build up this central Center, pawns yeah. which will allow, which will not allow him to attack easily. Yeah, when the two bishops are open, attack is very dangerous. But if you close the center and start your counter play, uh, things will fall into your place. Okay, g3, knight g6, knight g6 rookie one. So far he was doing so well and everything looks under control for white with uh, both bishops open and rook to the open file. But now also I, I also decided to improve my pieces looking at his pieces. So I just moved my bishop to b6 looking at some keeping some eye on f2 and in future I was planning any five at some point. Right and if you take, take, take then this suddenly you F2 have yeah. pressure down f2 line. f2 point. Okay so rook c1. Yeah. Rook c8. Improving the pieces. B4. B4. I decided to go queen e8 with the ideas of sometimes queen f7, knight e5 or queen f7, e5. And sometimes even try, it. for example, if he plays queen d3, just torture him with bishop b5. Mm. And then, I mean, just divide the queen from the main diagonal and then improve the pieces with queen f7 or something like that. So the main idea is to put the queen here and then try for e5. e5. Okay. So he played a4. Yeah. Queen f7. Bishop b3, preventing e5. He's, he's stopping your idea. Yeah, he was playing very prophylactically. So, to be honest, I was having a very tough time during the game, but later the combination which I found was uh, beautiful. Okay, when you when we reach that position of combination, we, we should pause the video. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. That's so the for, amazing feature we have in uh, Chessbus India videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let's, uh, you, you should tell me when to pause, okay? Okay. Rook c8. Yeah, just. So, presently, uh, if I was not looking for... Practical, so I decided to improve the rook first and then think about the e5 break with any seven ideas. Okay, should be two So now once again e5, e5 is, is coming up. Yes. Uh, he played bishop d4, yeah. takes, takes, and now you finally got it. e5. Yeah, but at the cost of uh, losing the b6 bishop, which was very important. Correct. Uh, so again, I mean, I will say the white is still preferable because I am having a lot of weakness. f6, b7 is hanging. But uh, from here, I will. It's pretty earlier to pause the video, but from here you have to start attacking. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't see until the end from here. Yes. Did you see until the end? I didn't see for, until the end from here, but uh, 
I, I failed that I'm having very good attacking chances. So instead of defending the B7 pawn, I started attacking with okay. Rook C3. Okay, okay. So let's make the move Rook C3. And now after Knight D2, uh, you you still went on the attack. You didn't care about the B7 pawn. Here uh, you need uh, this sort of a very important move. Because if you play Rook D3 here, which is which looks very good. I mean, you are attacking D2 and B3 at the same mm -hmm. time. And for Rook D2, you are always having Bishop G4. But here, any 4 comes. And after which, I think White is just winning. Because F6 is going and because of the pin, uh, it's over. Wow. Also, NC5 coming if you play King G7 or something like that. So, it's important that you play Bishop F5 here. This move I have seen. Topping Knight yeah. D4. He took the pawn and now Rook D3. And he continued to play f5. So he, he said, okay, now I want to make a queen. Yeah. You can win a piece, which you did. Yes. But how are you going to stop the pawn? So I think... This, this is the right time to stop the <laughs> video and find that very important move. Uh, you have to attack and defend at the both time. And because 8 is uh, queening with the check, so you have to be a little careful. So for example, if, uh, if you go like queen h5, I mean, d5 might be hanging, but a7 and you, even though you just are in time to attack, but he's making a queen with a check. Yeah. So you are very slow. And attack with the two queens is very dangerous. You will just get mated. Sure. So <coughs> it's important that you should stop. You should play bishop c8 first. Right. So bishop c8 was played and by... And debate the queen from the very good square. That is b7. I mean, which is keeping eye on the d5, also on the e7. And also it's uh, queening in the, with the check. Queen, so B8. queen B8, and now you found time to just take your king out. King out, yes. Okay. B5. B5. The point is like if I play A7 here, which is a possible, this is a definitely possibility. I am having Knight C6, and I'm getting getting a, the queen back or the pawn back. Okay. So, so if he takes here, you take again. This. It's a kind of equal position, but ah, I'm having the chances. Maybe you can take with the queen, right? Now. Yes. Also a possibility. And then F2 is falling. F2 hanging Knight D4 coming in. A lot of things. So he was not happy to play a7. Mm. Though it was the best move, he could have done a7 and c6 or a8 or something like that. And a8, a8 maybe. Queen. And then after knight b8, queen b8, and this something might like this. be interesting. Yeah. So. But he played b5, stopping knight c6. Knight c6. Now threat is a7. So again, this is the time to pause the video and find the best move, uh, which will give you a victory in this game. Okay. So imagine you are playing against the GM. And he has these two threatening pawns coming down your neck. Uh, what are you going to do here? Black to play. Okay, Numbair, what did you do? I went, uh, because you, when you have to checkmate your opponent, you have to go with the queen. So I started <laughs> with the queen h5. Wow. And so uh, so let, let the opponent make the queen, I'll checkmate uh, yeah, the king. Yeah, the idea is very simple, which you just told, queen f3 and I want to attack f2. So he, uh, once again, he played prophylactic rook f1, preventing that. Okay. And we thought for bishop h3, can go a7. And he, uh, yeah, a7. Uh, but now do I'm having queen, queen e2. F, yeah, I'm having queen e2 and queen f3 both. Ah, if queen e2. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, queen c7 first, sorry, instead of a7. Yeah, but a7, queen f3 is just queen 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 for black. So mm -hmm. he, he had queen c7. This intermediate move is also important. Now e7 is hanging. Yeah, so you have to defend it with king f7. And he's having the queen c3, preventing queen f3. And there is no way that I can prevent a7, a8. And because the rook is also attacked. What I'm, what he missed in the game is the queen is coming to e2 and there is a checkmate. Ah, fantastic. I had done the similar trick in one of the Mumbai Rapids where I was playing on the seconds and I knew this pattern. So that helped me in that game. I have to say to the viewers that if you come to Mumbai and play a rapid, you will definitely find Nuber uh, playing in that. He is a big uh, fan of playing rapids. But you will also see him at the podium at the end of the tournament. I think you have won. Maybe 20, 30 or more than that, yeah? Around 40 I have won so far. 40 Rapid. Rapid and Blitz including. Oh, yeah. Wow. And and mind you, Mumbai events, Mumbai Rapids are not easy. They start at 10 in the morning and go on until 6 or 7 in the evening. 7, uh, seven to 9 rounds. Yeah. Uh, which just says that Nuber is a fantastic speed player. He is very good at Rapid and Blitz. Um, Nuber, thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts. Showing us two victories against two GMs. And also this uh, very interesting line in the Karokan, uh, which starts with the move C5 here. I'm sure that uh, a lot of people will learn from this and start doing their research or start playing in their games.
Yeah. It's really interesting and uh, must try. Yeah, if you if you do win some game because of this video, then please do write in the comment section to Nuber so that he knows you used his ideas here. Yeah. Okay, Nuber, thanks a lot and yeah. see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Sagar.